I really appreciate you stopping by to check out yet another episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I'm going to talk about this guy, which is a Harman Kardon HK570i receiver. In 1982, this sold for $430, which would be about $1,300 and some change today. It was rated at 45 watts per channel into 8 ohms from 3 hertz to 100 kilohertz at not more than 0.03% THD. This was brought to me with a problem in that even with the volume set at max, you could barely hear any sound out of the speakers. So in this video, I'm going to go over what I found to be the problem and how I troubleshot it. And we'll see a tour of the front and then the back and of course the measurements and what I thought of its performance as far as listening to it. Once again, I thank you for taking time out of your day or night to check out this video. Here is a close-up view of the HK570i and we'll start over here on the left. We have our quarter inch headphone jack of course, power button, and I do have the unit turned on. Hopefully it kind of shows the the backlit display and, and how it looks. I think it's a, a handsome looking uh, receiver as far as that goes. They also call it ultra wideband linear phase and I believe that's because they list the frequency response as 1 hertz to 150 kilohertz. Um, I'm only going to measure from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and we'll see how it does there. We do have connections for two sets of speakers right here, so you could run one, two, or both of them. Our tape monitor loops are right here. We have our bass and treble controls here, and they do have center detents, as does the balance control. Here is a control that I have not seen. It's called the blend, and it has two positions, um, stereo and mono. And I will read from the manual as to what its function in life is. The mono slash stereo blend control allows you to compensate for a variety of speaker placements. Ideally, the distance between the speakers should be about the same as the distance from the listener to a point midway between the speakers. Under these conditions, the mono stereo blend control should be in its full stereo position, full clockwise. If the distance between the speakers is substantially greater than the distance to the listener, stereo imaging may be improved by rotating the mono stereo blend control counterclockwise toward the mono setting. So that is kind of the function of that control. We have our tone controls here. So we do have a tone defeat, which is nice. So if that is engaged, it bypasses your bass and treble controls. We do have a subsonic filter and a high cut filter there. And here are our inputs. We have one auxiliary and then AM, FM, auto FM, and phono. Right now it is set to auto FM and I do have a station tuned in. If I mistune the station a little bit, um, you can see the little LEDs come on there and the stereo light goes out. So it kind of just helps you tune it. We also have our loudness switch right here and of course a volume control and our tuning knob. Plus we do have a muting switch there. This obviously is the rear of the HK570i. Nothing overly exciting going on. We have an unswitched AC outlet here, a switched AC outlet here. We have our speaker connectors right here and those are the kind you press down and then push the wire in. We have two tape monitor loops which are here, auxiliary input here, and a moving magnet phono input there with the ground connection here for your phono. It does have a mute adjust here for the FM muting. Here is our AM antenna rod and we do have connections for the FM antenna there. One of the nits I would have on this is it doesn't have pre and main out jacks but I don't think you would expect that on this particular level of receiver. Here we have the THD SNR plot at 1 kilohertz for the Harman Kardon HK570i. Now this was brought to me with the complaint that they had the volume cranked up all the way and they could barely hear anything and right now I have the volume cranked about halfway 
we've got about 20 dB, but we're only putting out less than a watt into 8 ohms. And this THD is awful. It's around 20%, 25%. So this has some issues in it somewhere along the line. Unfortunately, there is not a pre-out main in jack situation on this. So I'm going to have to do some probing. And I will keep you posted as to what I find. Hopefully, I figure out what the problem is. My first step in troubleshooting was to connect my scope probes to these points right here for the right channel and right here for the left channel. And those come right off the volume control and go into the audio driver section part of the amplifier or the receiver. The volume control and there's uh, the preamp section actually is on a board under here and I'll flip that over and show you. And I figured it must be on that board because as you can see from this scope trace, both of the waveforms showed distortion uh, prior to going into the amplifier stage and they were both looked about the same as far as the distortion. So whatever was going on would be affecting both channels. That kind of tells me it probably is a uh, voltage uh, power supply related thing. And here is just a little closer view of those test points. And actually they were connected right here and right here. The distorted scope waveforms, which I should point out are one kilohertz, were taken at this point and this point right here. And those look distorted, so something in this area here was causing a problem. I did check right at the base of Q502 and Q501 right here and right here, which is basically off the volume control through the little capacitor. And that waveform looked undistorted. So something was going on here, and the first thing I decided to do was check uh, voltages around these transistors here. I did have uh, about 20 volts here where it says it should be about 15 and on the minus side I was only getting uh, like maybe minus 4 volts so if you follow the minus 15 volts which seems to be missing you can see it should be about 15 and a half volts uh, right here and when I measured this resistor um, at both sides it was getting like minus 5.5 four volts let's call it uh, here so that brought me to the power supply which I am troubleshooting now so this area right here in the circuit diagram is the plus or minus 15 volt supply generation area the minus 15 being this leg here from Q7 and Q5 and the first thing I did was check some of the resistor values here and they were good and checking the base emitter junctions of these two guys and the collector to base and collector to emitter all those seem to be okay I pulled Q7 out and measured that by itself with my little tester that I have that I've shown in an earlier video and it tested just fine then I checked this diode right here D15 he looked to be good and when I measured R11, I got an open. So that's a quarter watt, 150 ohm resistor. I replaced that and I double checked this resistor and I actually measured this capacitor by removing it. It tested fine, but I replaced it since I already had it out. So I just replaced this, fired it up and everything appears to be good. Why it decided to go, I don't know. It's a quarter watt, 150 ohm resistor. Replacing that solved the problem. Yeah! Here we have the HK570i putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz. The volume control was adjusted to give about 28 dB of gain. The THDs are looking really, really good at less than 0.005%. SNRs are looking good at around 80 dB. And the THE plus noise is also around minus 70 dB. So we're looking really good at this stage of the game. Uh, if you're curious, the harmonics look. So here are our harmonics. It's kind of mixed. You have the second harmonic less than the third harmonic for the left channel. And for the right channel, the second harmonic, the even harmonic, is greater than the third harmonic, the odd harmonic, for the right channel. So it's kind of mixed. 
We are looking at the frequency response of the HK570i from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. We're putting out about 5 watts into 8 ohms, and in this instance, we have the bass and treble controls set to their flat or detented positions, and the tone defeat switch is off. So here we're looking at a fairly good frequency response, maybe plus or minus, I don't know, three tenths of a dB and the channel balance probably is about three tenths of a dB. I'm going to go ahead and turn the tone defeat switch on, which bypasses the tone controls. And you can see how flat the frequency response is. It's only down maybe a tenth of a dB, maybe 0.15 dB at 20 kilohertz. The channel balance is about two tenths of a dB, so the frequency response looks even better if you switch in the tone defeat switch. Here we have the HK570i putting out about 45 watts, we'll call it, into 8 ohms. You can see that the THD is less than 0.03%. SNRs are at least 85 dB, and the THD plus noise is better than 74 dB, we'll call it. Our gain is still at 28 dB, and the specification for this receiver is that it puts out 45 watts into 8 ohms with less than 0.03% THD, so we are meeting that requirement. Here we have the output impedance of the HK570i, and the dampening factor would be about 44 based on the output impedance. The specification for the damping factor was 50, so this is actually pretty close. This is a plot of the crosstalk between the left and right channels. For all the measurements, I have been using the auxiliary input. And in this case, the input is going to the left channel, and the right input is terminated into a short. And we are seeing the crosstalk of the left channel onto the right channel. And it varies anywhere from about minus 70 dB over here to uh, a worst case of about minus 50 dB. There is no specification for this. Here we have a plot showing the THD versus frequency and power, and that's into 8 ohms for different power levels. The maximum power would be 40 watts, and the minimum power would be 5 watts. And we're actually showing the THD plus noise as a percent. And the worst case would be about 0.05%. Here we have the multi-tone response, which shows between 12 to 14 bits of distortion free range. Here is a plot showing the effect of switching some of the filters in and out. And the flat response, this would be with the tone defeat on, so we're bypassing the bass and treble controls. That is our blue line here during the that is our blue line here in the center. This is our loudness plot here, the kind of smiley face thing. We got quite a bit of boost, almost, uh, we'll call it 9 dB at the low end of the band. And then at the high end of the band, we're about 7 dB boost. Here is our high filter right here. It starts cutting in probably about oh, 11 kilohertz or so. And here is our low cut filter here. Right now, I'm going to increase the input signal level and see what the maximum amount of power we can get with a reasonable amount of distortion. So we're at 50 watts and we're at about 6 tenths of a percent THD. That's not bad. It's getting pretty ugly. So we probably can go just a little bit more. And right here is about it. We're approaching 1% THD and we're putting out, we'll just call it 58 watts. Signal to noise ratio is not very good, and the THD plus noise is not very good, but we're looking at about 58 watts into 8 ohms at 1 kilohertz for the HK570i. As you saw from the test data, the Harman Kardon HK570i did a really good job of meeting its little over 40 year old test requirements. Now, I did not test the phono section of it because that has an issue which isn't something that was going to be repaired. However, everything else on it worked really well. The AM tuner wasn't great, but the FM tuner seemed to tune very well. And the overall sound of this unit when connected to my Klipsch KG2 loudspeakers 
was really pretty good. It was a good pairing with that kind of speaker because most likely if you're going to have one of these you're going to have like a, a smaller to mid-range size speaker, maybe a bookshelf speaker. And I thought the 45 watts was plenty to drive the speakers. There was nothing lacking in the sound. Um, there's no turn on or turn off thumps. There's just a little bit of noise if you put your ear right next to the, the tweeter area. Um, but the KG2s aren't the most efficient loudspeaker, so they're not going to amplify some of that hiss, say, like the La Scala's would. But there was barely any hiss, and you had to have your ear right next to the tweeter to even hear anything that was there. So I think it sounded really good. I liked it without the loudness control as well as with the loudness control. And I just think it's a, a nice looking kind of a no frills receiver. If you had a system that you needed a nice vintage uh, receiver, this would do a really good job. It doesn't get hot at all. And I thought it performed to how it was designed. And you know, if I was out at a yard sale or maybe even on eBay and I found one of these for what I thought is a good price, I'm, I'm guessing uh, not more than $200. Um, it would be a, a nice addition to one's collection. I think it's a handsome looking unit as far as that goes. So that's kind of my take on the HK570i. If you have not subscribed to the channel, it would be a nice thing to do to help this channel grow. If you liked the video, click the like button, you know that. And until next time, have a great day or night.